Gators, I'm carrying the vacuum tube wedge and it's repair time again. What do we have here? It's this pesky little bugger that you probably have seen on the Inside Guys channel. It's the Ritakus uh, TR 110 that has a little issue that I'm gonna fix on my bench. So, without further ado, let's move over there and take a look what in, what's inside, because uh, Imsei Guy didn't uh, make um, a uh, teardown video of it. Just showing it on the outside and I'm gonna dig deeper and uh, fix uh, what's wrong with it. So, to the bench. So we've got this little radio. Maybe let's just uh, let's just uh, zoom on in. And uh, let's power this thing up. The display uh, comes up in uh, orange. Seems to be working, right? But if I press this, I can't. Uh, I can't press this. It uh, it feels uh, way different than the rest. Uh, mushy, squishy, not uh, your typical tactile switch. There's also the tuning knob, uh, it has a um, uh, rotary encoder on the side, but there's something wrong with this button and it's time to find out what's wrong with it. So I've got this screwdriver of truth taking out the battery it's a lithium-ion battery, 3.7 volts, uh, 1 uh, amp hour, <laughs> Dave Jones amp hour. <laughs> and then, uh, if we want to get into this radio, uh, there are two screws placed uh, under the battery. So, it forces uh, you to remove the battery before you work on it. <laughs> Pretty clever and good. So let's get a different view. Using my portable camera. <laughs> After I got my computer right, <laughs> it works way better. It's highly probable that uh, I'm gonna make a good use of it. So, undoing those screws, it doesn't separate uh, all that easy. 
But this can be spurred. Come on, Spudger is gonna spud. Almost separated. And it comes apart. Revealing the printed circuit board, the rotary encoder knob, then the speaker, the USB free, not uh, not USB free, but USB C charging port. <laughs> I tend to confuse uh, both um, free and C. And uh, what's interesting here is that. Uh, this little radio has two three and a half millimeter jacks. Uh, one is for the antenna, the other one is for the headphones. And of course uh, it has a uh, telescopic antenna. So let's uh, get deeper discombobulate this uh, just a teeny tiny bit more I like it that um, it has uh, two screws um, right in the jack area. That's for making the construction uh, more rigid. The marking on the printed circuit board is... Uh, uh, one more one, please. By dash uh, seven four seven uh, V four point two, and it was uh, made uh, in uh, November twenty twenty two. It shows uh, the the bands. Uh, and uh, modulations uh, that uh, this radio supports. FM, AM, uh, shortwave, um, air bands, uh, weather band, uh, VHF, UHF, uh, ham radio bands, uh, and uh, also the modulations. Uh, it can pick up uh, single side band, it can uh, pick up uh, wide band uh, and narrow band uh, frequency modulation and also it can uh, pick up uh, AM. Pretty versatile. So let's take the PCB out of this thing. Careful not to damage anything. And what we see here is that uh, it separates uh, the here we've got the display uh, zebra strip uh, contacts this is the zebra strip and the lcd this is the backlight panel for the lcd move the backlight panel slightly to the side And if uh, if you were already 
noticed there's something wrong with this. And then the button here. It's it's just uh, broken apart. So I will have to <laughs> desolder this and replace it with a new one. Fortunately, I got uh, some of those teeny tiny replacement buttons uh, from our local hacker space. So let's move in, move the fume extractor closer. No, come on, you pesky little bugger. I've done uh, quite a lot of uh, SMD work in my life, but <laughs> still not as, uh, as nice as uh, through hole or Point to point wiring. Oh, it came off. That's pretty nice. So this is how this discombobulated button looks like. The whole top section is gone. Not sure if it's gonna focus. This camera has an ADHD brain like me. <laughs> so uh, there's a uh, foil contact. Uh, but the top section is missing and what I'm gonna do now it's uh, playing some flux and uh, removing the rest of uh, the old solder with a uh, desoldering wick There, Bob's your uncle. Time for the new one. A bit of solder on one end first. I need some more precise tweezers. Might need some correction. Hmm. 
Yeah, let's try putting it back together. The backlight panel has to go first and uh, into place. Of course I'm not gonna touch the zebra strip. And then uh, the jacks go in. Making sure the PCB is properly seated. Time to screw it back, not screw it up. Of course, uh, turning backwards first uh, to avoid uh, cross-threading. Gotta be delicate about it because it's so easy to strip the, the thread. And the encoder wheel goes back. Putting the enclosure together. It's so much easier to Assemble it, then to disassemble it. And if everything is okay, it should work right uh, after powering up. Battery goes in. Cover goes in, power goes on, and look at that, <laughs> thing of beauty. Works like intended, quick and easy fix, nothing difficult for carry. <laughs> So that would be a look inside uh, the Ritaka's radio as seen on uh, MZ guys, but <laughs> not as uh, he walked uh, he walked us through um, using this uh, radio, how it functions, uh, what functionality it offers, uh, but uh, not how it's built. And I I made a. Uh, video about uh, how this thing is built. I uh, also uh, had uh, another radio. I've got two of them here in for repair. The other one had um, a display fault uh, and that was easily fixed uh, by cleaning the zebra strip uh, contacts with uh, isopropyl alcohol. So if that happens to your radio, you know what to do. 
And uh, I will tell you what, uh, you have to be careful not to drop it, uh, damage it, because uh, mechanically, all in all, it's uh, pretty flimsy. Not, uh, not built like a tank, uh, despite uh, all the cool features it has. So, that would be it for today. Stay determined and carry on.